Hey, Prince of Peace, Father John here. Welcome to the Monday message. So today I'd like to reflect on freedom of religion versus freedom of worship. Sometimes they're used interchangeably. But if we look exactly at those words, sometimes they're misquoted or misused against us as Catholics. So the Constitution, the First Amendment says, we have a right to free ex exercise religion. Right, not free exercise of worship. And today, many of us have seen protesters saying, let us pray, let us congregate, let us be together. And there's varying sides, there's varying things to think about. But one thing, um, that at least I know where they're not suppressing our freedom of religion, is because we still can do live videos. We still can pray for people. Uh, they don't want us to get together because of the sickness, the, the coronavirus. But of course now, if this continues on, right, every, you know, concerts are able to happen, big gatherings are ha able to happen, but now they say, well, uh, the coronavirus is so deadly, only it, we can't have uh, Catholics get together, people of faith get together. Now that'd be uh, suppression of religion. So, of course, I always wondered where Cardinal Super stood, and let me read a quote from him. Surely there have been moments in history when governments and rulers have persecuted Christians and banned their public worship. Then he says, this is not one of them. Rather, the present restrictions come in response to an extreme medical emergency as state and federal authorities try to safeguard human life. Okay, um, so that that's where he stands. And to a degree, that's very true. And he knows that I don't think the governor is trying to suppress religion. He doesn't want us to pray. He doesn't want us to worship. He just doesn't want us to do it together. And that is hard for us Catholics to swallow because so much of our community is together. I do wish there was a little more thought in the government to say, Religion was essential in the, right in the beginning, and we could at least gather 10 people right off the bat, just like the the grocery stores, just like, um, you know, the, the other essential businesses, restaurants. I know liquor stores are open. Um, I did hear the reason why they can't close liquor stores, because people would go and relapse if one's an alcoholic. So that's one of the reasons why. But I wish, you know, the government did consider... Um, religion essential and, and give us uh, rights right away instead of waiting about six weeks to make us essential with 10 people or less worshiping together. So that's, of course, a desire. I mean, think about it. 70 years ago, we'd probably, religion would have been forefront. You know, people wouldn't even think about not having that as important. But this is the culture we live in and this is the time we live in. And I know we're slowly having a soft reopen here. We're opening here at Prince of Peace. And you can read Father Gerald's uh, Bulletin article over the weekend to see how that's unfolding as we're getting a uh, sanitation team together so that everyone can be safe as we slowly reopen the church. But let's look at the difference between freedom of religion and freedom of worship. So freedom of religion, right, is very important to us as Catholics because we pray and we worship on Sunday but then we act as Catholics for the rest of the week as Christians. You can't separate us from Sunday to the rest of the week. We want to live as Christians throughout the entire week. We praise and worship God on Sunday. We receive him in the Eucharist often. And then we bring that the message of Christ throughout the week. And then we connect with him again on Sunday and receive him once again in the Eucharist. That's the ideal and of course, we have beliefs and we have a conscience. And if we have a well-formed conscience, we shouldn't be able, we shouldn't be forced to do something that is against our will. Probably remember about 10 years ago or so, maybe even less than that, they wanted um, Catholic institutions or religious institutions to pay for contraception. And as Catholics said, we can't do that. We, why are you making us force us to pay for contraception? What was the other option? It's closed down. That was a nice alternative that the government gave us at one time. So we fought hard for our, our free exercise of religion, the freedom of religion saying you can't tell us to the government that you have to suppress 
but you have to make us pay for something that we don't want to pay for. So that was one example of how they, uh, the government was trying to force their hand, their their will against our will, and we were combating. And then sometimes I remember some government leaders says, "Oh yeah, there's freedom of worship. Let let people pray on Sunday, but just don't bring your faith into the workplace." And as Catholics, we know we can't do that. We bring Catholicism every place that we go to. We can't shut it down. We can't turn it off. So that is that's where the rubber meets the road. And as Catholics, we want the sacraments so bad because it's so important. Jesus set up the sacraments, and we want to be with Jesus, and we want to experience Christ. We want to be with each other celebrating these sacraments because Christ instituted them. And Christ designed us to be together, to worship together, to be a community of faith. Not individual prayers. Even if we go to church, individual prayers have a relationship with Jesus, but not talk to anybody else. Um, we're not designed to have a relationship with somebody, with one person, not share that relationship with everybody else. But if you were married secretly, like, they're my wife, that's my husband. I'm not going to share that relationship with anybody else. Same thing with Jesus. Deep relationship with Jesus, we're able, we're supposed to be able to share that relationship with the people around us. And when two or three are gathered, it is in his name. I heard somebody trying to articulate the freedom of worship on the radio the other day. And he said, you know, if somebody wants to sing to Jesus or Christ in their heart, God in their heart, let them sing. They don't need somebody else next to them to sing. But religion is more than just singing a, a praise and worship song to the Lord. That praise and worship song is a is an articulation of belief and faith of who they are and how they're close to Christ. And we need to do that together oftentimes. And that's where the Lord wants us to get together. If Jesus really wanted us to have a personal relationship only without a community, he would have set that up for us 2,000 years ago. It's just not the way he wants it. Freedom of worship is, go ahead, let them worship on Sunday for an hour, but leave Christ or their faith in church. And then once they're done with church, forget them out for seven days. And then they come back to church, then they could pray again. So today, let us thank the Lord that we have freedom of religion still. I know we can't get together quite yet, but the good news is that the restrictions are slowly uh, loosening up and we'll start to reopen the church slowly, trying to make everyone safe so that no one gets sick, no one dies because we're praying together. And um, just a little reflection. Of course, I wouldn't want this to go on where we can't get together and like the church is the last place that we could get together, concerts and movies. That That's fine, but church, that cannot be. So we have to always keep an eye on that. I don't think that's really the case. I think the government does want us to pray, and they do want us to get together. They just want people to be safe. So enjoy this little time of reflection of what is freedom of religion and freedom from worship. And just to know sometimes if people arguing in the public square, they might throw in freedom of worship as the same as freedom of religion, but it's not. Worship usually is a sign of something we pray for an hour on Sunday, nothing else. Freedom of religion or free exercise of religion is something for the entire week. The Spirit of Christ is imbued in our soul and we share him with everybody we meet. And that's how we live our life. So we're Christians all the time, just not one hour on Sunday. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of the Lord. Thanks be to God.